You can see them all around you. That's sin. And if you indulge in those things, you'll have your part in the lake of fire forever, which burneth with fire and brimstone. There's another list. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting with verse 9, we read this. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Are you partakers of any of these things? You're a sinner. And you're headed for God's wrath. A lot of that is going on today. Uh, we have an uh, industry on TV that does nothing but glorify the fornicators in Hollywood and the adulterers. They think it's a big joke. But when they stand before God, they won't think it's funny. So there are a list of things that uh, are sin. But basically, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. And that which is not a faith, that's sin. Now where, what is the origin of sin? You know, everyone believes that Adam and Eve were the first people to sin. No, that's not where sin began. If we go to the uh, 28th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, we see where, where sin began and who committed the first sin. It did not begin with Adam and Eve. It begins with the anointed cherub who God created in chapter 28 of the book of Ezekiel, starting with verse 16, 14, and 16. And it deals with the prince of Tyrus which is the Antichrist, and the king of Tyrus, which is Satan. Back in eternity, God created this cherub, which is a four-winged creature, who covered the throne of God, flew over the throne of God, and reflected the light of God's glory. And he was called Lucifer. And Lucifer means light-bearer. And this cherub got a little too big for his preachers one time. And this is what we read. In Ezekiel chapter 28, starting with verse 15 through 17, we see his beginning, that thou was perfect, but thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. And it says in Ezekiel 28, 18 through 19, we see his ending, and I will bring thee to ashes. In Isaiah chapter 14, starting with verse 12, the Bible says this, we see his station, the king of Tyrus was his name, Lucifer, uh, the son of the morning. And as I said, Lucifer simply means light bearer. But look what happened. As I said, he got a little too big for the bridges. And we read this in Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Starting with verse, uh, starting with verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I shall ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. If you notice there, Lucifer uses five personal pronouns. I, 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 me, I. And my friend, if, if any generation was ever the I and the me generation, it's this generation. What was Lucifer's sin? was pride. He thought he could be like God. He was going to take over, as it were. But we read this. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake the kingdoms? So Lucifer, who sins, who rebels against God, who tries to become the final authority. Sins, the pride is, uh, the sin is the, his pride, the uh, desire to take over and be like God. But God brings him down to hell and he becomes Satan. Lucifer, who was the light bearer, now becomes Satan. Uh, the, uh, the dragon, the devil. And, see, we, and so we see that this is the beginning of sin. He rebels against God. But Isaiah chapter 14 verse 15 says, We see his sentence, Thou shalt be brought down to hell. So this is where sin originated. It actually originated in heaven. And Satan is cast down into hell. And he's the great deceiver. The one who goes about as a roaring lion, 
seeing whom he may devour. You know, Satan's one big trick is to get you to think that he doesn't exist. You know, people make fun of him. Halloween, you have the devil running around with the, the pointed horns and the, and the tail. Well, my friend, if you saw him as, a really, as he really is, you'd die of a heart attack. You'd die of fright. And God in his mercy doesn't let you see him. But if you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, you'll spend all eternity with him in the lake of fire. Now, we see the fall of Satan, Lucifer, as it were. The that is the original sin. Now we deal with the fall of man. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, we read about the fall. Genesis chapter 3, starting with verse 6. And who caused them to fall? Well, according to the scripture, it was Satan. Genesis chapter 3, starting with verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You see, the first thing Satan got Eve to do was doubt with what God had said. And there are a lot of people trying to get uh, people to doubt what the word of God says. God had commanded them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they disobeyed it. And this is how they felt. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of earth, of the trees of the garden, but of fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye that she shall not surely die. God said, you'll, you'll surely die, but the serpent gets her to doubt what God has said. And of course, she partakes of the food, she sins. Adam partakes of the food, he sins. And the next thing you know, we have 6,000 years of misery, sin, and rebellion. Man fell for one reason and one reason only. He did not put God first. Adam put his wife first. And as a result, he ate of the fruit, sinned against God, and lost that image that God had given him, the image of God. And she gave up to her husband, and he did eat. Genesis 3, 6. And because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, God says to Adam, certain things are going to happen. And uh, we know that because of their sin, uh, sin has came into the world and, and along with it, misery, wars, uh, rumors of war, sickness, death and pain, and all kinds of uh, bad things. So we want to deal now with the results of sin. What were the results of sin? Well, we see the results of sin throughout the scripture. And he says unto the woman in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. And here's what God says to the woman. Unto the woman, he says, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and that thy, thy, thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So God says, you're going to conceive in pain. And any woman that's had a child knows what that's like. Well, you know, uh, dear lady, that's a result of, of Eve's sin. That curse came upon womanhood. And look what he says to Adam in verse 17. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So God curses the ground because of what Adam did. Anybody who's ever been a farmer or has ever tried to raise a garden knows that that curse is true. You get weeds, you get all kinds of things. You've got to constantly go out there and, and take care of that garden or take care of your crops or the, or the weeds will just consume them. You have the bugs that you've got to watch out for. You have to spray certain plants. That's a result of the curse. And the curse is a result of Adam's sinning. And look what it says. In verse 18, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. Now he, taught, he says, Adam, now you've got to understand, Adam and Eve were in the garden, perfect, everything they ever wanted. And because of sin, they would not have to work, and by the sweat of the brow would they eat. They would have to work and sweat to get a meal, just to put a meal on the table. And anybody who knows who's ever worked knows that if you want to eat, you've got to work. If you want clothes on your back, you've got to work. At one time, that wasn't true. But because of the fall, because of the sin of man, 
God cursed Adam. And it says, and then God says this to Adam, For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. You are nothing, and I'm nothing but a big mud ball. And someday, this body is going to go into the grave and decay and return back to dust. Thus thou art, and thus thou shalt return. And because of the sin of man, death came upon all men. Do you know that your body was designed to live forever? To uh, recondition itself, to heal itself, but because of sin, that no longer was true. So we see the reason, one of the results of sin was that the ground was cursed, that man would now have to eat bread by the sweat of his brow. They exchanged fellowship with God, living under perfect conditions in a perfect environment. They exchanged that for an education, the knowledge of good and evil. And the reason God didn't want them to do that, of course, he was testing them, and he knew what the result was going to be. He, he, knew, he knows everything from the, from the beginning to the end. He knew they were going to sin. But the reason God told them that is because once they knew the, the, the difference between good and evil, they would do evil. They did evil because they disobeyed God. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, we read this. Uh, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove him out the man and he placed him in the east of, of the garden in, uh, of Eden, cherubims and a flaming sword which turned everyone away to keep the, the way of the tree of life. He would not allow them to stay in Eden and he would not allow them to partake of the tree of life any longer. And this was a result of sin. They lost fellowship with God under perfect environment. An absolutely perfect environment, they have lost fellowship with God. Now we read, we read about another result of sin. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, we have the first account of someone being murdered. And in chapter 4, verse 8, we read this. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. We have the first record of the first person being murdered. You say, how did this come about? It came about by sin. And, uh, and verse 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to uh, be concerned about my brother? Yeah, you're supposed to be concerned about my brother. But this sarcastic guy says, Am I my brother's keeper? Well, he was about to find out what's going to happen. And he says, what, And God said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And thou... Are, uh, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood in thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee his strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall not be in the earth. And because he murdered his brother, the blood, that innocent blood was upon the ground, it was cursed as far as Cain was concerned. And that, uh, that spelled uh, a lot of trouble because Cain was a farmer. And so we see another result of, uh, of sin. We see the first murder taking place. A brother murdering his brother. And then we see another result of sin. And this is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The 1 Corinthian epistle. Chapter 2. And this is what we read. Starting with, starting with verse 6, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because of sin, and because of God's desire to reconcile men back to him, the Lord of glory, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, had to be nailed to a cross and bleed and die and suffer that you and I might have redemption. And this is a result of sin. That a perf the only perfect man, the only sinless man that ever walked the face of this earth was nailed to a cross and shed his blood and died for us. This, my friend, is a result of sin. As it's recorded in Luke 23, 33, and they crucified him. 
They took that harmless, innocent, perfect human being who was God manifest in the flesh and they nailed him to a tree. That little babe that was put in the manger in Bethlehem, which we sing Christmas carols about during the Christmas season, that little babe grew up and was nailed to a cross that you and I might be saved. And that, my friend, is a result of sin. We read in Matthew 24, 4, uh, 4 through 12, about the great tribulation, a time like no other time, when there will be plagues and famines and death and sin will abound and iniquity will abound and it will be like no other time. And you say, why? It's a result of sin. The result of 6,000 years of man rebelling and sinning against God. Look about you, my friend. Turn on your television set. You'll see all kinds of iniquity and, and garbage and, and filth on TV. And it's just poured out, poured out, and poured out. Even the commercials are getting so bad you can't watch them. Well, these things were prophesied, the end times. The iniquity will get so bad that God will finally uh, bring judgment on the nation to this world. And that, my friend, is a result of what happened in heaven in Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28 and what happened in the garden in Genesis chapter 3. You know, I once heard a man boast about the fact that him and his friends were going to have a beer party in hell. Well, I've got news for you. Uh, there will be no beer party in hell. You'll be too busy. So you'll be too busy burning for eternity. Now, you may think that's harsh, my friend, but that's the truth of God's word. And that is not God's will for you. In the first epistle of Peter, we read this. God is not slack concerning his promise towards us, but is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but also come to repentance. God's plan for you is that you repent, trust Jesus Christ, and you can avoid that eternal hell, that eternal fire. The final results of sin is recorded in, in uh, Revelation chapter 20. In the book of Revelation chapter 20. We read this, starting with verse 11. This will be the final result of man's sin. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and when there found no place for them. At this great white throne, it is going to be so terrible that even the heavens and the earth are going to flee away. But there'll be no place to hide. There's an old saying going around, you can run, but you can't hide. And that applies to what's going to happen. And I said that, saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Notice that small and great. The common man and the great man will stand before God. At this judgment, if, if you have to come before this judgment, it's all over for you. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. This one. You'll be judged not in what this book said. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. So God has a record of everything you ever did, from the time you were conceived to the time you pass away. He's got a record of it. He's got a record of everything you ever did, thought or said. What you ever did when you didn't think someone was watching. Would you like that tape played before your family? Well, God's got that tape and it's going to be played back before you when you stand at the great white from the judgment. And it goes on. And the sea gave up its dead which were in it. And death and hell were delivered up. The dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to works. And God is going to show you what you've done. Play it out. Show you all the ramifications of it. And judge you. And listen to what it says. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Not a pretty promise. I can say that to you. That will be the final result of sin. 
But my friend, as I said, that's not God's plan. God has got a way out for you. And the Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh up to the Father but by me. God has made a way to escape this final result of sin, the lake of fire. And that's through Jesus Christ. You know, the Philippine jailer, and I, and I repeat this over and over again, but it's just to demonstrate how simple salvation is. The Philippian jailer cries out to Paul, what must I do to be saved? And Paul responds, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou, be, and thou shalt be saved. You see, salvation is not in a religion. Salvation is not in your good works. Salvation is not in your righteousness because the Bible says, as far as God's concerned, your righteousness are as filthy rags, as a pile of filthy rags. Go to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 and read it for yourself. The final decision rests with you, my friend. Either you believe what's in this book or you don't believe what's in this book. Either you choose to pick it up and read it and see what it says or you choose not to pick it up and read it. In which case, you'll be uh, guilty of willful ignorance. And that, at the great, great white from judgment, my friend, will be no excuse. So here it is, very simple. You're a sinner. You were born in sin. You have sinned. And you will stand before God, according to the word of God, someday, and give an account for your life. And there's only one thing that God will accept. And there's only one basis for God extending his mercy to you. And that's the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent from the sin that so easily besets you and I. That you might have forgiveness and justification. In Romans chapter 5 verse 1 it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, we extend the hand and the invitation to you to uh, think upon these things, to open the Word of God, the King James Bible, and see for yourself what it says. Again, we, we beg you, open the book and see what it says. Your eternal destiny depends on it. This is Frank Vieira saying, thank you for allowing us to come into your home. And may the Lord bless you and lead you into all. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.